Hey guys, Stan here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to the homestead. You know, when you when you start doing homesteading or farming or small scale, whatever you want to call it, raising your own food that involves animals, you're gonna have to make some tough decisions at times. Or, and some of those decisions will be much harder than others. And so today is one of those examples where over the last two days, I've noticed an issue and I'm gonna go ahead and based off the issue that I've noticed, I'm, my plan is to go ahead and early process one of the meat birds that's having an issue. So let's go in here and let's talk about what the issue is that we got going on and why I've come to this conclusion of what I need to do. So here's all the meat birds, happy as could be, full of energy. They literally, when I was talking to you guys, came flying up to me super fast, super energetic, and all about being with me. But if you notice, there's one that's not. You got this one that's all by itself. See all these guys running, and this one's not. It's just laying there. And you can tell it's even getting kind of soiled because it's not moving around and all the other ones are sort of soiling on it. So I really do not think this chicken has like that predisposition leg issues that Cornish crosses can get. And I'm not saying that because I did a video about why mine don't have that issue. As you can see, all these other ones are doing perfectly fine. This one had been doing perfectly fine all the way up until three days ago. But earlier this week, I believe it was on Monday morning when I came down to feed the chickens, something got through the electric netting and killed three of our chickens. So instead of 21, we're down to 18. One of the chickens was actually eaten. The other two had just had the heads removed and the bodies were in whole. My guess is that it may have either been a skunk because they typically like to remove the heads or I'm thinking it could potentially be a mink because about 10 feet to my left is our creek. And we do have a type of mink, the western mink here in our state of Virginia, that does run and live in the Appalachian Mountain area um, along water. And that is a small enough, slender enough of an animal that could have probably easily gotten up and underneath this area. Well, I noticed that afternoon, this guy was not very mobile. And it's been pretty much progressing that way. And I'm wondering if it didn't sustain some type of an injury while trying to get away from the attack that occurred. It just seems coincidental that all these birds are perfectly fine up until this. You bite my hand? You little punk, you've already eaten. Leave me alone. But the rest of these guys are unbelievably healthy, except for this one. So when you have situations like these, if you're gonna raise animals, you really have to start weighing out the pros and the cons of allowing an animal like this to continue on. The reality is these guys were gonna be processed anyways, ideally in about three or so weeks. Um, this one is to a size that it's not a complete waste and a loss. And I can't really tell externally where there's an issue, but I literally for the last two days have physically picked it up, taken it to food, physically picked it up, taken it to water, hoping that it would end up kind of bouncing back. And I just don't see it happening. Uh, but instead of this animal sitting here for another three to four weeks suffering, hoping to get a little more poundage on it or to see what happens to it naturally, it is in my opinion that instead of risking this animal being a potential complete loss and or suffering for the next three weeks, I have chosen to go ahead and dispatch this chicken today. But what I'm gonna do with this one is that I'm gonna go ahead and do the skinning method. Those of you that have been with me for a bit, you have probably seen my prior videos of skinning. And, and one great thing about the skinning method is when you only have one or two birds, whether it's got an injury and you need to put it down, or maybe it's an aggressive rooster and you've had enough of them and you're gonna go ahead and put them down and you don't want the animal to go to waste, why not go ahead and let it provide your, your family with, with some food? Um, but then also, you don't have to get out all the tons of equipment. And so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get this guy, I'm not gonna film me uh, dispatching it. I'll go ahead and take care of that part off film. There's a ton of videos you can watch on that. I've got prior videos on that. But we do the cone method 
And once I get this guy dispatched, I'm gonna time how long it takes me to process this guy completely down into the cuts that we're gonna keep back so it doesn't go to waste. And then I'll let you know how quickly that goes so you can see that if you need to make a decision such as this and you need to go ahead and take one bird out of your flock or maybe two or three, this is a quick and easy way to do so. But I don't want it to suffer. I don't want it to, to go on like this any longer. In my opinion, two days is long enough. I'm not gonna let it continue on. I don't like when I see people that raise Cornish crosses that aren't able to move like this and they try to let them keep going until the end to still put size on them and basically just put food to them. I'm sorry, that's not, in my opinion, that's not the proper thing to do. And so I'm gonna do what I feel is right and some may disagree with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this one up. We're gonna go ahead and dispatch it and then we'll bring you along as we go ahead and show you the skinning method real quick if you haven't seen it. All right guys, so all I have to be able to process this chicken, it's already been dispatched, is I got a bucket of water, and that's just to get the feathers wet. It makes the skinning a little bit easier, so it's not sticking to our gloves where there may be any residual blood. The empty bucket is for, to put the carcass in when we're all done with, and that'll get composted into our mulch pile. And then, as you can see over here, all I got is one knife, a cutting board, and the little bowl or glass dish, if you will. And that's going to be to put the meat pieces in that we're going to keep and we'll rinse off and bag up once we're into the house. So let's get on the board. We'll show you how quick and easy this is and we'll see how long it takes. So I'm just going to submerge the bird into this cold water. It'll rinse it off a little bit and it'll get those feathers wet. I'd be curious to see if I can tell if there's any injuries to the bird at all. And all I'm planning to, to keep out of this bird is going to be the breast meat and probably the thighs and maybe the wings we'll see so first remove the legs which those make good dog treats if you're interested in that i usually sharpen my knives right before i do a process like this but this wasn't expected uh, so we're just going to go with them the way that they are Cut a little slit into the cavity here, pulling up on the skin so you don't puncture anything you shouldn't. And then from there, you can see how it exposes that breast meat already. His skin's a little tougher than some, but there's the breast meat, and that's what we didn't want to waste, um, was at least that. And then we can pull this around a little further and we can expose the thighs and the little drumsticks that it has. Punch our little finger through there. Try to pull the skin up over the knuckle bone if we can. There we go. And there's just that little, that little drumstick there. Now normally I don't feed my chickens either the morning of process I do do the night before but not the morning of so this guy did eat this morning so I'm hoping we don't end up with any fecal matter coming out of him while we're working on this try not to push down on his lower abdomen area if I can to prevent that so there we go nothing big but it's better than nothing so now we're going to start out by, let's get the breasts, cut it along the breastbone, clay move. Separating it from the tender. Definitely need to sharpen the knives. Alright, 
So there's one chicken tender. I mean chicken breast, I'm sorry. Other breast. Chicken tender's awfully little. Well, that's because it was a little chicken. But we still don't want to let it go to waste, so. Lastly, the thighs. These you just pop forward till you get the bone out, like so. All right, so this is what I find interesting. It looks to me, and I could be wrong, but this bone looks broken in the thigh joint. And I didn't cut that, but it definitely looks injured compared to the other side. And so I'm thinking that's gonna be our problem. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So here's what I found interesting. Look at that joint and look at that joint. There's a very big difference and that's just how it popped out. And the other one is not near as clean in the joint socket. So I do think maybe this thing suffered an injury and maybe that was causing the problem. So then we're just gonna take the rest of this, put it in the bucket for disposal. And we just need to clean our cutting board, put him in the mulch pile, dump this water out and clean these three things really, really good with some bleach and water. So all I do now guys is after I rinse it off is I'll just dry off the meat to get a lot of the moisture off of it to eliminate the amount of frostbite. And then once I get some of the moisture off of the meat, when we do our bulk processing and we skin those, we use our food saver because those ones are gonna be stored for a long term. The, it's pretty rare that I have to do one like this, but when I do, I just do it this way, put it in a good quality freezer bag, but this will still help it and the good quality freezer bags have really come a long way so they do pretty well but we still just want to get if we get a lot of this moisture off it kind of helps it quite a bit so there you go two breasts two thigh leg quarters and two tenders and then what we'll do is this will go into the fridge for about two days and then after two days in the fridge just to let the the meat soften up a little bit, we'll migrate it to the freezer then if we don't go ahead and eat it after the two day mark. Well guys, I think that's gonna pretty much wrap it up. This, this was just a quick opportunity that I thought that I would share with you because so many people make it seem like everything that goes on with homesteading is perfect. And it's this great fantasy world. And don't get me wrong, there are some people who can do this thing so perfectly that it makes it look like it's effortless. But the reality is, is that if you are somebody who is just starting this type of a thing, there are a lot of issues, things that are gonna come up that you weren't expecting because you're so focused on the really good. And fortunately for us, this particular chicken was already gonna be a meat chicken and we had to do a little bit earlier, but you're gonna run into these same types of issues with your egg laying hens. Like I said earlier, you could have a rooster that's overly aggressive and you gotta do something with, and maybe somebody doesn't wanna take them, because I don't know if it's like my area, but there's not exactly people just chomping at the bit to get free roosters. Most of the ones who end up taking free roosters, they're probably gonna do exactly what I did today. Um, so not everything about homesteading is sunshine and roses, 
but there is a silver lining in most of those issues. So this issue today, although I did not get a chicken that was to the size that I would have liked, but I still was able to get something out of that bird to where that bird's life in turn gave us something back to our life. It may have just not gone exactly the way we wanted for both us and the chicken, but at the end of the day, it still did provide something. Um, we've had quite a few losses here on our homestead, especially over the last year to year and a half, but there's been a lot of things learned through that. But today was just to give you an idea of two things. Number one, as I just said, that there are gonna be issues that come up on the homestead that you're gonna need to make a decision out of for both the benefit of the animal and for yourself. And then secondly, for chickens in particular, because many people start out with chickens, particularly egg laying hens, but you could still potentially need to harvest a chicken or two. And in my opinion, instead of just killing a chicken to put it out of its misery and then just dumping it away, if you can make use of that chicken and what is wrong with that chicken doesn't cause a health concern for you to consume that chicken, then in my opinion, make use of that chicken's life and put it to use for your family and make sure that they had a greater value here while they're with you. So guys, I hope this little quick and easy process method helps you out if you haven't seen how I've done it before. And I also hope that maybe this just gets you thinking in the future about maybe what you may need to do if you're new to homesteading and you're gonna to choose to raise animals. So guys, I appreciate y'all hanging out. As always, we appreciate your continued support. We hope everybody's doing well. Stay bundled up because if you're like us, temperatures are dropping fast. So guys, the holidays are coming up before we know it. So get ready for those as well. So guys, appreciate y'all. Y'all be good. We'll see you here very soon on our next episode. Thanks guys.